All right, folks, welcome back to Outside the Levees. I'm Jared Cerne, and I am your host of Outside the Levees. We are down here in South Louisiana. I'm using my giant dip net, big old giant dip net, to catch shrimp in a roadside ditch. We got a hard, hard current running right now. These shrimp are coming through a little bit at a time, and I'm just scooping them up, getting some exercise, and putting on a show for y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get right to it. All right, y'all, they said I was crazy. They said it couldn't work, but here it is. Shrimp in my giant dip net that my buddy Ryan Boudreaux made for me. Ryan, you are the man for taking me up on my crazy idea. And I got swimps, baby. There they are. Three swimps. All right, so I found these three big culverts that are running real hard with the tide. There's a shrimp. Oh, I must have had an extra shrimp in there. All right, shrimp. Four shrimp. All right, here we go. All right, so that was one. Oh, no. All I'm doing is just getting in there and scooping real good towards where those culverts are emptying out. Get my shrimp. Oh no. There he is. All right. Okay. So you come in here, get you a good. Oh, what did I catch? Come in here, get you a good scoop. Oh, that water's running so hard, folks. All right, let's try off to the side here a little bit. That seems to be doing a little bit better. All right, got one shrimp on that one. All right, let's try right here, guys. See if it makes a difference. Oh, you see the shrimp jumping. Got him jumping. Did I get any shrimp on that one? One little bitty shrimp. All right, let's try another one. All right, come on, shrimp. Two little bitty shrimp. I'll let all them go. There's a shrimp. I see a shrimp. Got some shrimp in that one. All right. If I could find a little sweet spot, that'd be cool. Oh, they jumping everywhere right there. Golly. A lot of rocks in that one. And a crab. Where's that shrimp? There he is. Shrimp are jumping everywhere on that one. Shrimp net. One shrimp and a crab. Give me a shrimp. Ah, come back. Oh, he got away. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, what we got? I think we got shrimp. Nope, we got jellyfish and a little bitty shrimp. All right. Go back to a scoop. Got a nice shrimp on that scoop. That's a nice one. I'm gonna just dump everything in the bucket and then we'll sort later. That's the scoop. That's the one right there, you gotta go low. 
can show y'all. There he is. All right. How about that, y'all? So I think I found maybe a sweet spot. Let's see if you go low, because that water gets deep right there. There it is. That's the scoop right there, folks. <laughs> Look at that. Let me get this rock out. That's awesome. All right. Oh, there's one. Don't get away. Oh, nope. Oh, all right. All right. So it's this little deep hole right here. You got to get down. Go. Get in there and get your swimps. Just like that, people. That's how we're doing swimps today. Get them in my bucket. There they are. All right, folks, putting some shrimp in the bucket. Life is good. Getting some exercise. A couple nice shrimp every, just about every scoop. Just about every scoop I get a couple nice shrimp. So not a bad size shrimp at all. I mean, hey, look, it's free shrimp. I'll take it, right? tons and tons of tons of whatever these little minnows are it looks like baby mullet i'm pretty sure it's baby mullet but this little hole right here seems to be the best catching spot and honestly the closer i get to those pipes the harder it is to push against the current like i'm pushing with all my might right now i can barely do anything in that current so i think for saving energy you just hit this little hole right here and that little hole back there. All right. There we go. Got a nice shrimp on that one. All right. Hold current in the hole for a second. Oh man. This is a lot of work, folks. Hopefully it'll pay off with some nice shrimp, though. Let's see. Did that work? The problem with holding current is the jellyfish. You get a lot of jellyfish when you hold current. Oh, there he is. Come here, shrimp. Nope. There's my shrimp, people. All right, let's try again. Yeah, the scoop seems to get as much as holding current and less jellyfish. So I'm just gonna hold for the scoop for now until I get tired. All right, folks, so here's all it is. You got water pouring through out to this ditch, three culverts, and then the road. And I'll go show you where the culverts are. See, here's where it's coming through at how hard that water's running too it's coming up hard we got wind blowing out the south real real hard tide levels are super high and they're just shooting on through that culvert shrimp going through with it and i'm staged up over here just dipping my shrimp having a good old day i wish my kids were with me man they'd get a big old kick out of this Catch a lot of rocks and stuff too. Dang, all my shrimp's coming out. I'm in shrimp. All right, there we go. All right, let me come back to my little good spot right here. Boom. Got a swimp. Got a swimp. You trying to get away? No, shrimpy. No, shrimp. Don't get away. <sighs> Come back to my other good little spot.
All minnows. Ooh, big old crab. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that crab, y'all. He's coming with us. You ain't getting away, buddy. No, sir. Got a nice shrimp on that one. Just something fun to come do. Get active. Like I said, this is the best workout I've had in a long time. And I'm catching shrimp while doing it. So my big scoop net is 32 inch ring and a three foot deep net. I've been curious to see if I need to go deeper with my net. I think if you're doing it this way, it doesn't really matter because you're just scooping and dropping. I think if I want it to hold current better, I probably should add more. I also noticed that if you try one spot a few times and don't get anything, you need to move back to the other spot. See? Shrimp in that scoop. Now, I bet you if I scoop again, I probably don't get no shrimp. Got a shrimp. Got a shrimp. It's easier than cast netting too, because you don't have to pull the net in like a cast net, you know? You just scoop and get rid of what you got. All right, y'all, I'm getting on them. Nice little mess of shrimp with my dip net here on the roadside ditch in South Louisiana. We got lunch for sure. Wait, oh, I got a shrimp. Nice little shrimp. Nice. Heck yeah. <laughs> Look at him jumping, that's so funny. Got a nice shrimp in there. Couple shrimp. I keep getting these jellies too, man. Look at that, see that gel? Nasty. In case we want to catch some bass or something. All right. There's a shrimp. Nice shrimp in that one. Nice shrimp. Nice shrimp. Holy cow, look at that one, y'all. Whoa. Two big old shrimp. Come here. Ow. Oh no. Alright, one big shrimp. Two big shrimp. That was good right there. Something about right here. It was just like right there. Let's see. It's that eddy. Oh, are we learning something? That little eddy. Yep, got another one. They in this eddy right here. Got another shrimp and a lot of trash. But I figured out that they in the eddy. It's that little eddy right there. There we go. Got a shrimp. Yeah, that's the spot right there. It's this eddy right here, folks. Look at him jumping. Look at all the shrimp in there. Oh, now we're learning something. Now we're learning. Got a shrimp. It's just a little eddy right here. You don't even have to dip the net down that deep. Pretty interesting. 
All right, wish I'd have known that the whole time, but now we know for when we come back. Yeah, you don't have to dip the net down that deep. Let me see if they stay in there so I can get two pulls. Be nice if I could get a couple pulls without having to empty. Oh, two nice ones, boy. Get them nice shrimp. Yeah, you're right. Don't jump out the bucket, partner. We need you in that bucket. Look at them shrimp. You hear them. You hear them ticking in the net. All right, folks, so I think we got plenty enough for lunch. I mean, what a better way to spend the morning. I got a nice workout in, dipping that net, using my abs. What a great morning here in South Louisiana. Thank you so much for watching Outside the Levees. I'm looking for more spots to do this stuff, this roadside netting, crabbing that kind of stuff, stuff that anyone can do. I appreciate y'all being a part of what I do. Now we gotta get our butts in the kitchen and make some lunch. All right, folks, I got my shrimp all peeled up. What a cool way to catch them. Just dipping a net, scooping a net, catching your shrimp off the side of the road. Don't get no cooler than that. We're gonna do some easy shrimp tacos. I've got some seasoning from my boy Hot Rod, so let's get right into it. All right, so what I got is Hot Rods Tequila Lime Seasoning here, and you can get that at hotrods.com. That's my buddy. He's from down here in St. Bernard with me. Good old boy, and he makes a lot of good stuff. So this one has a little bit of lime and just some, like, general fajita seasoning type flavor to it, and that's what we're going to hit it with. Go in there with that. Cover them up pretty good. Mix it up. Hit them one more time. All right, and let's get to cooking. All right, I got my butter good and hot. Let's drop in those shrimp. Start cooking them. All right, and for my tortillas, I like to use these. Uh, it's not as good as homemade, but it's 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 better than the ones you just get by the bread. And they're made by La Abuela. You go ahead and just cook them in a the pan. Just waiting on that tortilla to get ready. Look at it pop up like that, huh? Tell me that's tell me that's almost as good as a home cooked one. Check that out. All right, y'all. Let's put us some tacos together with those little shrimp we caught in the ditch, huh? How about that? Just riding around looking for spots, folks. That's all it is. You can do it too. Then I've got, uh, this is a angel hair cabbage and cilantro mix. That's gonna go on next. Okay. Then I've got some Newman's pineapple salsa. That's going on next. Old Newman, boy, he makes some good stuff. I like the Newman products. Old Newman, he's a good dude. Okay, get you some pineapple salsa on there. All this stuff is super easy, folks. Really, anything you can grab at the grocery. And then lastly, I'm going to put, this is Taco Bell's Chipotle sauce. They sell it at the stores. I just put it in a, a squeeze bottle so I could get it on the way I want it. Bada bing, bada boom. Just like that. That's your tacos. All right, folks, look at that. Look at those delicious tacos. Mm -mm -mm. Now we got to try it out. Oh, baby. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Oh my goodness. Makes it all worth it. That was a workout. You know, that current was rolling so hard and I'm pushing that net back into it. Definitely a good workout. Got some good something to eat afterwards. 
All right, I do want to say this. Shout out to Masioc, who is a sponsor of Outside the Levees. If you guys ever want to do something nice for me, to support me, or to support the channel, go use my code OTL20 at mossyoak.com, store.mossyoak.com, to get yourself some 20% off of Masioc. And that lets them know, hey, we watch Outside the Levees. We appreciate that he wears Mossy Oak, that he uses Mossy Oak, and we want to support him. So go use that code OTL20 at store.mossyoak.com. Get you some Mossy Oak gear. I got something on my, this one's got like a tree on it, but they got all kinds of cool stuff. You see me wearing it all the time. So go get them a holler, use that code, help me out, let them know we're making moves. We just getting started. Appreciate y'all being here. All right, folks. Welcome back to Outside the Levees. I am your host, Jared Serenay, and I'm down here in South Louisiana. There's the road, and I'm in a roadside ditch right now, trying to catch me something to eat. What I'm gonna start doing, which is what I typically start doing, is throwing a net, okay? And that'll give me an idea of what's here. That'll give me an idea how much of it is here. And then I kind of base everything off of that. So let's get started with that, and then we'll kind of see where we're going from there. Got one really nice size uh, shrimp <laughs> and not much else. So let's throw a few more times and see what's going on. I can use these shrimp for bait if I need to to catch fish or something bigger too. Oh. All sorts of brim. I mean brim out the wazoo. Really none of them big enough to eat. And I'm not allowed to keep any type of sport fish from my net anyway. So all of these brim are going to be going home. I am going to go ahead and keep the couple shrimp I caught. We got a couple little shrimp. So most likely what's happening right now is I'm just catching my basic bait so I can go fishing. All right, we got a nice size mullet here. Go we'll put that mullet in the crab net and see if we can catch anything. All right, so on my big crab net, I've got a bait cage. I'm gonna go ahead and put those pieces of mullet. I chopped up that mullet. One, two, three bloody pieces. They're all gonna go in the little bait cage. And then we'll put this crab net out and see if we can catch some crabs to go with our anything we catch, we eat from the roadside ditch. All right, I got my big net, let's put it in. Let's see if we can start catching some crabs. All right, next I'm gonna see if I can catch a few more shrimp if they start running good, we'll stay on the shrimp. If not, we're going to go ahead and fish with the live shrimp, see if we can catch a fish. Able to get a few shrimp on that one. So many brim. Shrimp and mullet. That's all right, we can cut that mullet up and use it for bait too. Oh, I see shrimp jumping. Quite a few shrimp in that cast. All right, check that out. I caught a nice bluegill, but it's not legal for me to keep these in a cast net. So I'm gonna go ahead and release that fish. There's lots of them here, just most of them are really small. Not exactly something we would eat, even if I caught them with a rod and reel. So let's let this go. Now what I also caught is a mullet. And that's stuff we can cut up and use for crab bait in the nets we have. So let's definitely keep him. And then we also caught some more of these live shrimp and that's gonna turn into great bait for bass, for drum, for redfish, whatever it is that we can catch here on the roadside. So I think that's gonna be the next move. Let's check the crab net first and see if the crabs are running. If they are, we got plenty of mullet so we can move on to that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and check that one crab net I have out. Two little bitty tiny crabs in it. 
neither of them are keepers. So let's go ahead and set them back, move on to some fishing. All right, y'all, I was completely unprepared. Didn't have my camera on or nothing and caught a redfish. Uh, I don't even have my thing to measure him. He could be 16, he could be not. Let's get him back in, see if I can get a little bit more prepared and see if there's some more fish here. All right, that could have been totally random or they could be stacked up here. I have no idea. I got my bucket of shrimp now. I'm a little bit more prepared. Let's throw shrimp in and see. <laughs> little bitty bass. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Caught me a little bitty bass, y'all. <laughs> so I just need your big brother now. Put him back. All right, y'all. Got one. All right. All right. Caught us a fish. <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna keep, but we're gonna check him. Beautiful fish, five spots. That's all five spot. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the five spots. Check him out. Beautiful little fish, huh? All right. Okay. Not quite a keeper, but a nice little fish. Let's go ahead and put him back. not quite a keeper but if we keep catching we'll put out that net see if we can catch some keepers but he does need to let go of my shrimp there he goes all right my cork rig is under probably crab let's see what's going on oh boy he got me all Eel. Look at that, y'all, a freaking eel. What? Look at that. Can you believe that? Huh? <laughs> y'all want me to eat it? I don't know how to eat them, so I don't know what to do here, to tell you the truth. I don't even want to touch that thing. Wow, that's a first. Okay. All right, got me a eel. That's crazy looking, look at it. Wow. Not what I was expecting to catch. I'm gonna let it go, y'all, because I don't even know how to eat something like this. I don't know how to clean it. I don't know what to do. <laughs> look at that thing. Let's go let this go. Dude, look at the slime off of that thing. Uh, you think I'm gonna eat that? Heck no. No, sir. Ain't gonna happen. Alright, so the reason I put it back, I don't want to kill something and then, like, figure out what to do. Like, I don't know how edible they are, how much meat they have. I've never, I've never had one before, so I don't know. So that's why I made the decision I made. So we're still fishing for... Tide rolling. Let's have a crab here. That's it. Ooh, it's a nice crab. A little bit better one. Little crab. I still let him go. I'm trying to get bigger ones. He's nice enough to let me keep my bait too. See, so let me keep my bait. Why I let them go. It'd be hard to catch a fish with all the crabs down there. Alright, let's check the crab net. Nothing. How's 
that even possible? We got something to keep y'all. Stubbornness paid off. We got something we can eat. Yes. Better not lose it. We ain't catching much today. Oh, yes. We got a catfish we can eat, folks. Oh, Lord have mercy. We worked for that. We worked hard for it. <laughs> we caught something we can eat. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, so all I'm doing is I've got this uh, jig head. This is, I don't know, that's about a 3 8 ounce right there. Definitely. Yeah, 3 8 ounce jig head and the shrimp that I caught. And I'm just kind of hooking them through the mid section of the body, getting them down there on the bottom and just letting them sit, really. There's not, there's no magic to it. Um, if I had a chair, I'd be chilling, reading a book, you know, waiting for the rod to go off. But here we are y'all fishing from the roadside getting us something to eat all right here's my little setup there's that road here's the ditch and we got a rod and a rod all with shrimp out got my little live bait bucket over here with my shrimp let's see if i can show y'all some of my shrimp y'all see my shrimp jumping around in there that's my bait and we just waiting trying to catch a couple more so we got something to eat tides moving good got a good falling tide got folks fishing down there i don't know what happened with the crab net we'll go check that in a minute but i expect it to at least get a couple crabs that's kind of strange but so far we got something to eat let me combine that with the shrimp be all right all right let's go check the big crab net valuable i'm not gonna leave it out here right, this one got a fish on oh boy i don't know what this is i don't feel like much of anything but you know oh okay well it's a little bit smaller freshwater cat i mean it's edible got us a smaller freshwater cat one more thing to eat i'll take it <laughs> better than nothing since I want to save some of my shrimp to eat, I'm going to go ahead and put on a piece of cut mullet. I'm going to try to save the rest of my shrimp. That way I can fry a few and we'll figure out how we're going to put this meal together. I don't know what I'm cooking yet, honestly. I don't have any clue. But let's put this piece of cut mullet out there and see if we catch one more or two more fish with it. All right, folks. We're down to the last few minutes here. Uh, beautiful, beautiful fall. Feels like fall day, got a nice cool breeze. I don't think it ever left the 60s today. Uh, high 60s, maybe low 70s, but just wonderful, wonderful day. And we got a fish biting right now, I believe. Come on, you're gonna do it, do it. There's a lot of stuff keeps grabbing me on the bottom too, so it might not be a fish or it could be a crab. Um, but man, I just want to thank y'all so much for tuning in. What do I have? It's got to be junk. I keep picking up junk on this rod. This one's sitting on the bottom. The other one's on the drop shot. Oh, it's a nice crab. Ooh, a jumbo crab. Good night. Oh, he let go. That was a jumbo crab. 
I just wanted to thank y'all for everything. Thank y'all for being a part of what I do, for tuning in. It's been a wonderful seafood season with the shrimp and the crabs. I'm kind of really not sure what I want to do next. Um, I definitely want to do some small game stuff, some squirrel hunting, uh, some rabbit hunting. Not gonna probably do very much duck hunting. I don't get a lot of views on that and I just love to duck hunt. So it'd be nice to go duck hunt without video. Um, also, you see my shirt here, Mossy Oak. Definitely go use my coat. If you are preparing for the hunting season, you wanna get you some new camo, some breathable camo, some warm camo, OTL20. Just type in that code when you fill your cart with whatever you're gonna buy. Type in OTL20 as your promo code. That's gonna save you 20 percent on your order and it also lets mossy oak know hey we watch outside the levees we appreciate y'all sponsoring this guy so he can go make videos for us and it just looks cool i mean here's the turkey shirt i'm wearing the hat uh, y'all see me wearing the camo the hoodie so go use that code that's why we have it for my supporters to go use it once again if you have any ideas what we should be doing this fall let me know but i'm thinking i'm thinking some squirrels some some small game stuff like that and probably some crabs along the way as well oh it's a good one it's a little bit better one now i'm assuming it's a catfish oh gosh it's fighting he almost took my rod in y'all he tried to take my rod in i ain't letting him of course we try <laughs> he likes that cut mullet Goodness gracious, he likes that cut mullet. <laughs> he liked that cut mullet. Oh, you get right here, you digging. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I hope my other rod don't go off. I don't care who you are. I just hope that other rod don't go off while I'm fighting this guy. Oh. <laughs> Look at that monster. Look at that beast. Beast from the east. <laughs> I am not going to keep this fish. I've got enough to eat. These bigger ones tend to be full of worms. But dude, that was fun to catch. A little bit smaller than I probably would. But I think he's just too big. Super fun to catch. Let's get him back in the water. There he is. There's old big head Ralph, big sausage head. <laughs> Let's go get him back. Off he goes. Back to the deep. Go get it, go ahead. There he goes. Just a couple lonely redfish today. Lonely redfish. Well, we got some catfish and some shrimp to eat. Eating whatever I catch in the roadside ditch. Outside the levees, y'all. That's how we do it.
All right, back at the house, got my catfish, got my shrimp that I caught that I used for bait to catch the catfish. Let's get right into it. We're cooking on the grill today, just something simple, easy, and maybe even a little bit healthy. Appreciate y'all being here. Let's get started cooking. All right, I made me a little aluminum foil boat for my catfish. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with K-Fred. Cajun seasoning. Get it coated pretty good. All right. All right, next I wanna try this Patterson's mopping sauce. This is uh, this was sent to me by the folks at Patterson's. They wanted me to try it out. It's a barbecue mopping sauce. So let's try some of that on this catfish. Yeah. All right, and cover your fish up. I'll use a little brush just to kinda get it on everything. Moving on down here where we really need it. Make sure it gets all, everybody gets covered up in some sauce. Good deal. Go ahead and cover that up with another piece of foil and then shut it and let it go for a little while. All right, in a pan, melt you down some butter. All right, I got a green squash chopped up. I wanna hit that with the Kinder's buttery garlic and herb. And get some of that in there. We're gonna let that cook down for a little while. Wait till that gets pretty, pretty close to being done. All right, once they're close to being done, go ahead and drop the shrimp and hit it with some more buttery garlic herb. Some of that good, good. And just cook that till your shrimp are done. Let's take a peek at this. It's been going for about 10 minutes at about 400. Not quite, not quite ready yet but it's, it's bubbling. That's what I like to see, some bubble, some sizzle. Let that go for a little while longer. All right, there it is. Some delicious shrimp and squash with the barbecued catfish. Mm-hmm. Not bad for fishing from the roadside ditch, huh? We're gonna make it happen, y'all, one way or another. We always do. All right, look at that plate hanging out at the roadside ditch getting something good to eat we got catfish we got shrimp we got to catch a big old drum life is good let's try out this first oh my goodness y'all oh my goodness mm. holy cow and let's try out some catfish not bad that's not bad i've never tried anything like that before where you cook it in in a sauce like that uh, on the oven it's obviously healthy you know um pretty good pretty good what i really want to try maybe is like deep fry that in like a wet batter and then come on with the sauce but that's a good sauce i really enjoy it i've tried it on some ribs before it was very very good so check them out patterson's mopping sauce good good stuff give them a uh go give them a follow go give them a like see if you can find them mm. i gotta go eat the rest of this plate i am starving i appreciate y'all so much for watching and we'll see y'all on the next one all right y'all welcome back to outside the levees i am your host jared serenay and i'm down here in south louisiana and today is one of those days where most people would probably just stay inside it's rainy, it's kind of nasty, a little bit cool, not cold, which kind of makes it bearable for us. But today is also a day where I need to get out here and make me a catch and cook video, because that's what I do. I'm a YouTube channel, we do catch and cooks. So I had to figure something out that I could do 
hopefully have some success. So I'm here on the banks of the Mississippi River. I'm trying to catch some fish. We're gonna go uh, get some bait first. That's the first thing I have to do. And then I'm gonna get into fishing. Thank you so much for being here with me. Let's go get started. Oh, there we go. All right, let's see. Rip it in, come on. Mm, nothing. something all right we got bait now there we go there's some good bait all right all right got me some bait and I am down here at the river I'm gonna try and catch some catfish we're gonna see if the salt water has got some salt water fish in here, some redfish, sheep's head, anything like that. But it's an ugly, dreary day. Dreary day. And, uh, but we got videos to make. We got a job to do, let's get to it. All right, I'm going to start with my sliding cork. Give me a nice bait here. Hook my bait, good, all right. And we're gonna throw out here. I got about 20 foot on my sliding cork. All right, let's give that a try. Gotta give it time to get down. Cool, was that a tarpon? That was 100% a tarpon, just roll. Hey, finally, all right. Oh, you <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me, bro. Oh. First bite all day. He got, he uh, watched him. I lost him right there, dude. At least maybe they'll start biting though. Hey, get out of there. Get out my bucket. Get, get. Come on. Hey, leave my knife alone, bro. You serious? I'm gonna have to teach you a lesson. Get out of here. Get out of here. Goofy. Come on. Don't be stupid. Trying to pick up my knife. What the heck's wrong with you, man? Hello, you want it? Go get it out there. Dummy. Oh, there he is. Got one. There he is. All right, finally figured him out, y'all. Got quite a few bites. All right. There he is. There he comes. Come on. Ooh, it's a nice one, too. All right. Come on up here. All right. Finally got him figured out. Oh, my goodness. What a day. I'm here, you dummy. All right. Finally got me an old catfish. Oh my goodness, y'all. That took forever. Don't help. This guy's trying to steal my bait. But we got us a nice catfish. I think I figured out where to cast, where the bite is. So let's keep on catching. They can put me some baits out here. 
and I'm gonna put him in my bucket. There you go. All right. Oh, got one, got one, got one. Yes. Finally, golly. Come on. Oh, that's a nice one, y'all. Yes, indeed. Look at that big honker. Look at that big honker. All right. Finally got me one. I'm a you big honker. Oh, he let himself off. All right, well, you go ahead then, big man. There you go. That was a little bit bigger than I wanted to keep. I'm here before you get yourself off. Go ahead. I'm here, rascal. I'm here, you rascal. I'm here. You about to get yourself in a bind, partner. I'm here. All right, let me help you out, bro. All right. A little bit bigger than I wanted to keep. See if I can show them to y'all. Alright, there he is. Alright. Hopefully I can find me a consistent bite here. I'm definitely struggling too. But what a pretty fish. Big old belly. Go ahead. Alright. Alright, so I saw where he was. Let me see if I get right back in there right about there that's acting like a bite that's a bite all right oh there he is there he is get on up here just in time mister oh all right man it's been a grind bro all right where is he at get over here He's stuck in there on the rock. Come on, you rascal. All right. Man. You gonna fish? I didn't bring my pole. I got one in the truck. Yeah, I got one, I'll fish with you. Yeah, I got one in the truck. I think I got everything to rig up. I just need, I just need a jig head. I got everything. If you get the rod out my truck. There's Mr. Ricky, y'all, that's my partner. This is another good eater, so we'll keep this one. That should be good on eating fish. But I came to catch, man. I'm out here in this nastiness, you know? I wanna catch. I got you. I know, I know, you like it, they're not. See him thumping it. There he goes. There he goes. All right, we finally figured the bite out. There you go, bro. Not a bad one. Not a bad one. Hanging out on the river. It's about as ugly a day as it can be. I guess it could be colder. Could be cold. Could be a lot colder. It's about, I don't know, 65 degrees. Catching a little eating sized catfish, the occasional throwback. All right. All right, so that's what we're doing. Two of them, actually, that's like a, like a, just a regular old jig that's head. Come off a jig. That's what that clip is, like a uh, a bass fishing jig, with two of these pogies on there. Just seen a weight with a hook. Toss it out and see what they get. All right. So, Ricky's really got the cast and the technique down pat. I'm finally starting to get it. So, the key is getting out far enough. That's one of the big keys. If you go really any closer than where it's hitting. It, it's not you're not able to get down to where they are it's like definitely the difference of five feet is a fish or not a fish so he closes his bail tightens up any slack now it's 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 sinking down to where they are 
I believe they're on a drop off. I think that's why it's so spot specific, like five foot closer and you, you haven't made it to the drop off. You can see them starting to mess with it. No? It's not every single cast, but dang, dang near every cast. The stick, the stick holding me up. Yeah, the, like if, oh, <laughs> he hit it on the retrieve. Come on. <laughs> it's a stick fish. <laughs> yeah, as soon as it hits, I drop it. There's a strong, really strong current. Yeah, right. Come on, take it. Come on, take it. There he is. That's a very specific cast, golly. I know it. Man, they, they just acting so strange today too. Like they give up. Wow. All right, there he is. All right. Another pretty blue cat coming out the river. All right, that's what we out here doing folks. A little bit of a trick to it, but not a lot of a trick to it. Just beautiful eating sized catfish hanging out in the rain, baby. In the rain. Most of these are blue cats. Uh, I don't believe we've caught any channel cats. They're just all stacked up, honestly. I caught a few on the discharge pipe over there, but now we're catching them on the drop off. If you can get past all of these birds. But just a great time. So unbeknownst to me, it's a very, very specific cast. A little bit further than I was casting before Ricky got here. That's actually not too slippery. Okay. And then a quick close and more or less get your slack out. And it's going to kind of shoot down into where I, I'm assuming there's a drop off. And that's where them fish are just sitting. Which is why when I was drifting across, I probably wasn't right where they were or I wouldn't get down far enough something wasn't quite right with that sliding cork so the really only challenge aside from the cast is the birds yeah he's got a bird messing with his little pogey but yeah all those birds out there are feeding on all the same stuff the catfish are all the stuff I caught for bait so, you're kind of casting as a challenge around birds, but that should be a fish right there. That looked pretty money. God, that is fun, bro. Jesus. Oh my goodness. That is so fun, dude. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sling him on up. I like that ramp. There it is, y'all. Hanging out on the river. Catching fat daddy catfish too. All right, I'm over here trying to dry some camera gear off Ricky's over here on these fish, like they're going out of style. 
Get him. Ricky's over here like they're going out of style first cast. Yes, indeed. All right, my dude. I see you. My boy Rick showing up on outside the levees. Know it. <laughs> you keeping any fish? Nah, I think I'll just come over here and have a good time. time huh? with you. Yes, indeed. That's what it's all about. That's right. We needed these fish. On a day you can't get outside them levees. Yeah, right. Well, technically, I mean, we're on the other side of the levee. True. You know? Give me a fish. Act like you want to hit some divers out there. I don't know. You put. Oh, there he is. There he is. I think he had it. I think he had it. I never felt anything. In on the fish ramp. Come on. Walk him up the fish ramp. All right. He's hooked on the bottom of his jaw. Ooh, that's a good keeper right there, huh? Perfect. All right, well, Ricky showed up. He figured the bite out. So I was casting out here with that sliding cork and really not getting any bites. Y'all saw me. I tried and tried and tried and tried. And then uh, Ricky said, dude, let's just throw a jig head. Well, I had already been hung up doing the drop shot. It never occurred to me to just try the jig head. And sure enough, he's getting bites. So go get him, Rick. No, I seen him. I seen him take that line, dude. You seen the line just... Huh? <laughs> you got a big and I got a net if we need it. The ramp is pretty handy. Yeah, the ramp. Yeah. Average. Average. That's funny how about halfway they just give up, man. Uh huh. They're not fighting all the way in. And this is the little fish pulling ramp. Drag him on up. There you go. Nice. I know. All them shrimp eating on. Right. Oh, I seen shrimp jumping earlier. I want that tarpon now. I don't even have a flight. Go for that. I guess me like a top border. Who knows, man? People drive themselves insane trying to catch tarpon. There he is. If you get the cash right, you get a fish. If you don't get the cash right, you ain't getting a fish. That is very interesting. Come on. Come on, you old rascal. Get on in here. Out here in the rain making videos for y'all. Catfish are finally cooperating a little bit better. This one's definitely a hammerhead. See if I get him up on here. Come on. Come on. Get on, get on the board so I can. There you go. Oh! <laughs> oh, you sucker. There you go. Come on. Alright, drag you up here. All right, that is definitely bigger than I want today. All right, folks, we're catching them. As you can see, the rain's getting worse, but uh, I don't know what to say, honestly. It's, uh, it's the beginning of hunting season here. I wanted to come get on these fish. Thank you so much for watching. I'll probably go ahead and get out the rain, get these cameras and everything safe, but thank y'all so much for being a part of it, and we'll see y'all in the kitchen. All right, y'all, well, I'm back. We got our fish all cleaned up, and uh, I want to get to cooking today. The kicker is this Patterson's Mopping Sauce. That was sent to me by the folks at Patterson's. 
And a mopping sauce is different from like a barbecue sauce that we're kind of used to, where it's a little bit thicker, a little bit sweeter, kind of brown sugary ketchup based. This is a very vinegary style sauce that they'll kind of baste like ribs and chicken and things like that as they're cooking and smoking on a, on a pit. So that's what this is for. But since I don't do a lot of that type of stuff with the fish and wild game, I've been thinking like, what can I do with it? What can I do with it? And I'm finally gonna get to try what I've been thinking for it. So we're gonna get right in. You're also gonna need some bisquick. We're gonna do a wet batter on those fish and this stuff is ideal for doing that. So get you some of this, get you some of that Patterson's. You can go to their website and get you some of that. But let's get right into it. All right, there is my beautiful catfish fillets and uh, they're gonna wind up going on this bun. So all I wanna do is cut about a bun size piece off of a couple of this. Don't worry, we can eat this too. But since we're going for these sandwiches, let's go ahead and just try to cut about bun size pieces. All right, what you wanna do is go ahead and dip it in some of that dry bisquick. Get it coated in the dry stuff first. It's gonna make a mess, so it is what it is. Get it coated in that first, then go into your wet batter, like so. Come on out and try to get a bunch of it off. You really don't want a bunch of it on there. Just try to get a bunch of it off, like about so. And then just drop it in, let it do its thing. All right, so I went ahead and flipped it. I did forget to mention this mixture here is just basically what they call for uh, for the pancakes on the on the Bisquick. The only difference is on the pancakes, they call for milk. I went ahead and just used some water. You could use beer, you could use carbonated water, but I just added water instead of milk. And uh, so that is just dry Bisquick. That is the pancake, you know, subbing uh, milk for water and then dropped into oil, hot oil at 375. All right, folks, now I wanna take some of my Patterson's, go ahead and dump some of that in here like so, okay. All right, I wanna lay my catfish filet in there, kinda of get some of that delicious sauce all over it, move it around, do whatever you gotta do. Don't be scared. Okay. All right, and that's what we got there. Okay, and I'm going to take it out. Take me a brioche bun, get it on the bottom there. Get some mayo. Put some mayo on the top of your brioche bun. Drop on some pickles. Drop on some lettuce. Mm, mm, mm. Already looking good. And then we're going to drop on the catfish. And there it is. Little masterpiece. Look at that bad boy there, folks. Them old catfish swimming in the river had no idea this was what was going to happen to them. Especially they thought they had a day off because it was cold and rainy. But we got them anyway. Now we got to try it. Oh man, there it is. Look at that. Mm. What a work of art, huh? Let's see how that Patterson's is. Mm. Oh my goodness. So many good flavors going on. Such a fun thing to do. Heading down to the river, catching some catfish. Fall is just getting started as far as I'm concerned, folks. We got a lot coming. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check often for videos because I'm cranking them out. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Thank you so much for being a part of it. And we'll see y'all on the next one. All right, folks, here we are at the roadside ditch. This is a good one down here in St. Bernard Parish. When you come to visit us here in St. Bernard, come on your trip, book you a place to stay. And we got lots of places like this to stop along the road and fish this bayou. I know I'm calling it a ditch, but it's actually a bayou. And you can come down here and do this yourself, but you're gonna need some of this. That's right, that's the filet mignon 
right there. That's dog food, folks. And we're going to hopefully turn this filet mignon dog food into filet mignon of the bayou. That's right. We're using this to bait up and catch shrimp. I got my partner Vinny from Pelican Bone Outdoors. And we are some shrimp catching dudes ready to put some videos for y'all together. So let's get right into it. All right, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and put some holes in here and try to get that scent and juiciness flowing into that water and get them shrimp congregated around it. And we'll throw our nets in the area where this can will be sitting. There's my can of dog food, AKA shrimp bait. I'm gonna toss it right where I wanna be throwing my net. Let it sit and hopefully them juices, get them shrimpy dews hanging out and ready to be cast netted. All right, folks, so another thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try to trap those shrimp with a crawfish trap, okay? So in order to do that for bait, I've got some cat food. That's right, we got the filet mignon dog food. This is Fancy Feast Medley's cat food. So we'll pop that top. Open that about halfway, okay? Drop it in. I'm gonna close my trap back up here put my clip back on now it's ready to throw out so we got two things we're trying we're trying cast netting and we're trying traps all right let's see oh my god Woo, that's a bogey there what huh? on earth hold on y'all can't see this Oh man, what a mess I've got myself oh, into. Well, uh, ay, ay, ay. Might have to put a couple of those on a hook, see what we can get. Sure. Not what I felt like dealing with on my first cast, folks. Not at all what I felt like dealing with on my first cast. All right, y'all, let's try that again. Hopefully I don't get all pogeyed up. That big old look at that big big jumbo got me a big jumbo y'all oh got one they falling out let's see got me a big jumbo shrimp they kicking in the nut vinny and they jumbo oh they look at that they good and go oh, look good at and dude. Vinny. Look at the jumbos, And we ain't got those at the house. Look at right. the jumbos, Vinny. Jeez, um, that's good enough for a bowl. Me and Vinny got the jumbos, y'all. We catching off of them. We, we gonna the catch jumbos. some crab. Oh, too far. Me and Vinny oh. got the jumbos. Good size to them, folks. Right now, let's see if we got any jumbos. Oh, yeah, all jumbos. They all jumbos, folks. They ain't little. They not little. Beautiful shrimp, huh? Oh, well, got some bigger. I ain't going to throw out of it. Oh, that is the largest one. That giant cockahoe. Look at my giant cockahoe minnow. Ha! Baby bass and a and shrimp, of course. Got some jumbos. Ah, uh, those are some medium. Oh, oh, and a crab. Look at crab. Oh yeah, all jumbos. Oh, look at this big jumbo in there. <laughs> this is why you come to St. Bernard, folks. Now, I will say this: you want to book that trip soon, because something like this it could be gone and pretty soon. So go ahead and book that trip. Visit that website. Get on down here, one Delacroix Highway. Okay, and you just gotta find spots. There's really no. Oh, hey, come to this spot. This one's the best. That one's the best. You got to get down here, ride around, do your homework, and find you a good spot. All right, come on, Jumbos. Come on, Jumbos. Oh, that's got to be right by the dog food right there. And this one. Stump knocker along with my shrimp. See my Jumbos, and then you see my stump knocker. Not a bad cast. Not a bad. Oh, man, look at the size of this one. Look at the size of those shrimp, folks. Life is good here in St. Bernard. Come see us. 
All right, y'all, since I know I'm catching here, I'm going to go ahead and put the camera away, try to get some numbers going for a second. But that's what we got, big jumbo shrimp. So I'm going to put the camera away for a second, try to get some efficient casts in, and load this bucket up a little bit. y'all that's what I got so far I've made probably about 10 throws since I uh, went to the time-lapse on the camera I'll go ahead and get these on ice keep them nice and fresh but so far life is good all right back to the whip dog food and numbers wise it makes a difference y'all that net has got shrimp from the top to the bottom so definitely the dog food. These shrimp are nice, big size. I love it. Right. So if you're watching this, you may have noticed that I caught some freshwater fish, some saltwater fish, and some shrimp all in the same few can, right? So the reason for that is this is brackish water. It's a mix of fresh water and salt water. So as the crow flies, I'm probably uh, 30 miles or so to the Gulf of Mexico from here. So this bayou here actually used to be the Mississippi River. At one point, this connected directly to the Mississippi River. Many moons ago, of course. So it was a complete, well not a complete, but it was a freshwater bayou that was influenced through tides with salt water. And that's what built this great fishery that you're seeing here was all that mixing of those two elements, the freshwater and the salt water, the nutrients that were in the Mississippi River, the clean saltiness of the gulf where the fish go to spawn, the shrimp go to spawn. It all came together to make this little sportsman's paradise here in St. Bernard Parish. And that's why I've been telling you for a year now, over a year now, to come visit St. Bernard because it is so unique geographically. We're on the eastern side of New Orleans, which puts us in a unique spot because we supplied New Orleans with the seafood they needed. New Orleans is a, is a food mecca for the world. And you could see why, because I'm hanging out here with my buddy Vinnie Verdan from Pelican Bone Outdoors. And there's a road right behind me, a completely public road, and we're catching shrimp. Nice shrimp. That in other parts of the country, that could be $14 a pound. But here you are in St. Bernard getting it for just your time. That's why we want you to come, folks. Now, if you are planning a trip or are interested in planning a trip, the best resource we have is that website, visitstbernard.com. I'm not able to plan your trip for you. I try to show you pieces of what you can do when you come. So go on that website, look up a place to stay, look up some of the main attractions, and then go back through my videos and pick the activities that you want to do based on what you saw. So this is once again Delacroix Highway. We found a safe spot to pull off the road. I'm not too close to the road with the rushing cars. And I just got a cast net. You can bring a four foot cast net, a six net cast net, an eight foot cast net, whatever you're comfortable throwing, bring it. Book you a fishing trip with one of our fishing guides one day. Do this the other day. There's lots to do when you get here. We want to see you. Thanks for watching. All right, that's what I got in a few casts right there. Pretty good size to them though. I don't know if I'd say that's that's a true that's not a true 16, 20, maybe 21, 25s. Beautiful shrimp though. I, dude, I don't know. I just hit a load of shrimp. They coming through, Benny. They coming through. Oh, I got a big old mullet too. Look, look at all the shrimp though. They coming through. Vinny just had 19. You said? Vinny just had 19. 
I got somewhere in that neighborhood too. So they coming through good now. Oh, one got away. Oh my gosh, look at this throw. I know. Look at that, y'all. Full of shrimp. Full of shrimp. Huh? That's awesome. Amigo! My buddies down there, they done got their net stuck three times. The dude had to get in the bayou. Hey, let's share the love, you know what I mean? Aki! On them, folks. They're still on them. All right, y'all. Once again, this is my friend Vinny with Pelican Bone Outdoors. How y'all making? He is a YouTuber from just across the river. We do a lot of the same stuff. So if you like my stuff, you're gonna like his stuff. Eat it. Look do at it. the size of that do mullet. It. Eat it. Do Eat it. The Keep mullet? it. Keep it. Do oh, it. Bro, look. Oh, I get into peer pressure now. I get into peer pressure. You're mullet, you gotta bro. try it at least once, bro. Is it good? It's really not bad. They got a bloodline. That's the only thing. All right. Eat big so enough. You got I'll a big shrimp. Get, get your big swim. <sighs> look at that. That's a big mullet, cuz. Huh? Hey, we gotta check that trap. Oh, yeah, we do need to check that trap. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! 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 God dang it, they're going everywhere. Go. What you got? Hey, okay. sir. Como se dice? Camarones. Camarones? Camarones. Wow! Already? Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Look at a shrimp, y'all. That's what he already caught. Yeah. Time about five minutes. Wow, <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> give, me, give me a high five, amigo. Yeah, that's awesome, hey. man. Look at that. What you gonna cook? Um, fry. Fry them? Yeah. Yeah, frito? Yeah, frito. 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 Oh, one got away. <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> Life is good, y'all. Yeah. This is Mr. Ernie, y'all. I don't know if y'all remember him from the garfish video. He was slanging him in the boat. Different time of the year, different season. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There they are, y'all. Yep. Got the swimps. Pretty. Yeah, they're pretty. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, folks. Well, we're having a good time. We got us a little crew out here. I'm going to get back to throwing, see if I can catch some more, fill up my ice chest. Thank you all for being with me, and I'll check in in a little bit. Got shrimp. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. It's a cat. Catching good, y'all. We still catching them. Look at them shrimp, folks. That's why you come down and visit St. Bernard. One of the seafood capitals of the world down here. Man, if this has got shrimp in it. The anticipation is killing me. Go, oh, got crabs. <laughs> no shrimp. Just a crab, no shrimp. All right. That's interesting. Try yours. That's data. That's a yeah, science. Right. That's Not a. It's a much better bait. Oh, oh, oh shrimp. Shrimp. shrimp! We got a shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> it caught a shrimp. All right, that's one. Let's let that right there. Let's see if the other one got anything. No. So the dry works better. If you're looking to catch one shrimp, <laughs> one shrimp, use dry dog one. food in your minnow trap. You just want a little snacky snack. You know the sad thing, Vinny? We didn't even catch any minnows. <laughs> <laughs> one shrimp, one. I caught more minnows with the cast net. <laughs> <laughs> well, scratch that off the list. I guess right. we're gonna stick with the cast net. All right, let's see. Y'all still catching? Still, still plenty? Yeah. yeah. Look at that. 
Look at a shrimp. He got some in his bucket. Yeah. Bueno, bueno. So what these guys do, they dump on the ground and everybody, everybody helps and they get all their shrimp in the bucket. You watching for that crab? Yeah. <laughs> He's got his shoe. He's got his shoe to hit the crab. <laughs> Look at a shrimp. There you go. You trapped him. That's a good idea. I like that. He trapped it with a shoe. Oh, shrimp getting away. Look at that shrimp. Ooh, look at that big old shrimp. Golly, y'all. That's a good shrimp. Good day, huh? Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Gonna be eating good, good, good. Beautiful. Beautiful shrimp. I'm gonna show y'all my little haul for the day, huh? Not too bad. That's a uh, 35, I guess 35 quart. Almost filled up. Not all the way filled up, but I needed to have some room for ice. Right? <laughs> Not bad. This is why you come down to a place like this. You explore, you get outdoors, try something new, or try something that you've done before just in a new place. And you could be fishing here, I just don't want to. I want to catch shrimp, you know what I mean? So, I mean, listen to them. You hear them ticking, you see them. Why would you want to do anything else, huh? All right, well, I think I got about what I need. Let's go to one of our wonderful restaurants here in St. Bernard and see how they cook them up. All right, folks. Well, hey, that's as good as some roadside shrimping is going to get. What a bunch of fun, especially seeing all those folks from all different walks of life out there getting some shrimp to take home to eat. But I didn't take mine directly home. I went home, got cleaned up, and now I'm here at one of my favorite restaurants here in St. Bernard called That Kitchen. And like I've been telling you, all of our restaurants here in St. Bernard are influenced by the seafood industry and culture here in St. Bernard. And they all offer something with shrimp, something with crab, something with the oyster. This is one of my favorite ones just because the simplicity of the food, but also the creativity. And then the folks here are just amazing, really nice folks. So if you come down and go shrimping, if you come down and go fishing, if you come down and paddle your canoe, whatever it is you do here in St. Bernard, come see these folks here at That Kitchen. Whether you bring your own shrimp or fish or not, they got something good for you to eat. And I promise you it's influenced by St. Bernard culture and seafood. So I'm gonna get the house burger with some shrimp on it. Let's go see how Chef Maida does it. So we got our house burger on the grill today. Um, this is one of our items that will definitely have you coming back for more. <laughs> so we got a beef um, patent hot sausage, hamburger patty, 100% beef, and we got some fresh off the boat shrimp. Look at off, the, off the road, off I caught those road. off the road. Off yeah, the road. yeah, okay. I wasn't even on no boat. Gotcha, That's right. off the road, beautiful shrimps. Look at them. Right. Okay, okay so we're gonna go ahead and go and that's with our house seasoning on it as well. All right. What's in your house seasoning? The so house seasoning, we got a little bit of um, some Montreal seasoning going, a uh, house batch that I have in there as well. Followed with some, um, you know, just some good old red pepper flakes and all of that good stuff. Awesome. Ooh, woo. Man, man, man. Look at that. All right, there it is. What a beautiful work of art, huh? That's why I come back over here, folks. Chef Maida will take care of you, whether you bring your own shrimp or not, come see her. All right, y'all, and it's still hot outside, so they served me their house, Arnold Palmer. Last time I got the house punch, which me and Jack absolutely loved. Here's the house Arnold Palmer. They make their own stuff. 
Mm. So sweet, so good. But now it's all about that house burger with those shrimp we caught on it. Mm. Look at that, folks. Come on now. You see why I come back. You see why I want you to come to St. Bernard. This ain't no joke. This is real life stuff right here. Absolutely perfect. You could do the whole trip in one day. Head on down, find you some shrimp. And once you got what you need, drive straight here to that kitchen, get you something good to eat, and then head on back to your hotel, your fishing camp, wherever it is you decide to stay when you visit St. Bernard. Head to that website, visit stbernard.com, figure out how you're gonna come get in on this, and we'll see y'all next time. Oh gosh, did y'all see that? Oh, a giant bass, wow. All right, folks, I got a real tight window to get this one done. Uh, I wanna go fishing. I'm gonna go somewhere roadside fishing. I've tried this little spot that I've been at, there's nothing biting, but I'm catching shrimp for bait. So let's go ahead, let's get to work. I got the big dip net here, the big giant. <laughs> the big dip net, let's get us some bait to go fishing. All right, let's see if I get me some bait. Oh, shrimpy dudes, good Lord. Did y'all hear the shrimp? Good night. That's a serious amount of shrimp. All right, let's try that again. We might just be catching shrimp today, y'all. Golly, look at them jumping everywhere. All right, let's try again. Right here. I see shrimp jumping. I hear shrimp in the net. All right. Definitely gonna have bait when it's all said and done. A lot of trash, man, a lot of trash. All right, let's just get the bait we need. Dude, that is so dirty right there. Here's shrimp. Bunch of shrimp. Holy cow. Where'd all these shrimp get out? Current is going that way. Feeding into the pipe. I'm ticking a lot of shrimp not quite big enough to eat but hopefully we could turn it into something we want to eat right got a shrimp Catching shells as I drag the bottom, but I'm also catching shrimp too. Got a shrimp. I think it's one. Some side to the other side. Definitely catch more on that side, but a lot cleaner on this side. Got a shrimp. And this is just catching bait, folks. I need to go try to find somewhere to fish. I need me some good bait to do it. Another crab. Come on, crabs. I don't need to get out my way. All right, folks, I don't ever know what exactly I'm getting into on a given day, so I always keep a rod, some hooks, some split shots with me. Happen to have this cork. This was not what I intended to do today but I always keep it with me. Let's see if we can keep the bite going. These catfish seem like they kind of come and hit it and don't 100% commit. But that one did. Oh, you sucker. <laughs>
Oh, there he is. All right. There you go, bruh. Blue cat. Better than nothing. Come on. Take it. Take it. There you go. Oh, another blue kid. All right. We got him now, y'all. We're going to pull it off after all, folks. They said it couldn't be done. We got him. Let's bring everything right here. All right, y'all, I finally found the bite hanging out here by this big shrimp boat, using shrimp to catch catfish. Better than nothing, I'll tell you that. All right. So what's going on is you've got a little bit of current coming in between the boat and the bank here and those catfish are just kind of staged up in there probably coming out from under the boat I would think I mean almost every cast now I just kind of leave it there and let them till they finally get it but there he goes there he is oh that one a little bit bigger that one a little bit bigger all right we get him there we go all right uh, I wanted to give up y'all. I really did. I wanted to give up today But I'm a youtuber We we're a little bit crazy Every cast catfish action I'll take it, huh? Every cast catfish Catching them with the shrimp that we caught too into the catfish den boy they down there like lions they're down there like a pack of lions like a pack of hyenas Just inhaling shrimp they're really smart that's a great ambush point to tell you the truth like they could be out and out but they're not they're smart they know everything's got to shoot through in between the boat and the bank here <laughs> Look at that shrimp getting chased. Did you come? Oh gosh, did y'all see that? Oh, a giant bass. Wow. Oh, don't get no better than that. Look at that. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. I hope y'all, we got all that. That was too friggin' cool. Wow. That dude said, Groosh. all right, we in the right spot now. Alright, let's get back in there. We're catching bass and cap. Oh, dang it, my shrimp's gone. We're catching bass and catfish now. Ow. Ow. That dude said, Kadoosh. Yeah, it's just an ambush point, you know? You got a big wide open bayou there, but that water's pinching through right here. fish are using it as they should be they probably do it every day you know when the tide starts moving like it is now oh gosh 
I think he got my shrimp. No? Thought for sure he got my shrimp. Try it right here again. Come on, catfish. We know y'all there. There you go. There he is. All right. Got him. Got him. Oh. All right, catfish. We got you. Whew. Okay. That's a good one there. That's a real good one. Look at that one. Perfect size, huh? Not too big, not too small. That's what we like. All right. All right. Get me another swim. Let's see if we pick us up another bass right here, huh? Oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> Told you. Told you I was going to pick me up another bass right there. Nice little eating size bass. I want a po' boy, I can tell you that. I want a fried fish po' boy. Come on, somebody come eat this shrimp, huh? Ooh, I've seen the shrimp jump. Something chasing it. Ooh, come on there. Come on, you almost had him. Come on, finish up. <laughs> I just forgot a shrimp. It's entertaining to say the least. I see the shrimp like out of corks dancing and doing stuff, and ain't no fish on though. Something giving that poor shrimp heck down there. There you go. Come on. There he is. All right. Finally got one in a minute but hey we'll take it that's what we're catching little channel cats some bass we're gonna be eating good folks all right y'all i got home got my bass got my catfish all cleaned up and i'm gonna show y'all exactly how i made this delicious fried fish po boy let's get right into it all right so i dropped me one egg in there i'm gonna make a nice coating for my fish before I put it into the little flour mix that I made. We'll go with some mustard. We'll go with some tiger sauce. I love this stuff. All right. And mix that up real good. All right, then let's go ahead and drop our fillets in there and get them coated. This is gonna help it stick to that flour, but also add some nice little bit of extra flavor with the tiger sauce, the mustard. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. All right, and once they sat in that for a minute, go ahead and get them coated. This is my own little mix I put together. I've really been favoring making my own fish fry mixes rather than the ones that are pre-made uh, for a few reasons. I can control the flour to cornmeal ratio. I can add the seasonings that I want to add, the amount of salt that I want to add. So I've really, that's kind of where I'm at right now. And uh, this is what we have. I have a nice garlic seasoning in there that I like, and that's what we're going with. All right, and now that my oil is up to temp, I'll go ahead and drop my fish. All right, folks, and here is my delicious po' boy bread. This is uh, a French style bread that most people will get when they make a po' boy. So you'll just have to try and get the closest thing you can if you don't live in the New Orleans area uh, and you can't get a traditional po' boy bread. Any type of hoagie bread or anything, whatever it is that you can find will do. Don't worry, you'll be just fine. You don't have to use what I use. You use whatever you can find, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you comfortable. I'm going to go with mayo, I'm going to go with ketchup, 
probably even go with a little bit of tiger sauce. Okay. Definitely going to go with some tomato. Then I'll go ahead and put my fish on my po' boy. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that, folks. How about one more just for good measure? Look at that, huh? Okay. And then we'll go on top with some lettuce. Some pickles. And there it is. And that's how it is, folks, fishing off the roadside. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Always enjoy putting these videos together for y'all, and we'll see you next time. All right, y'all, I'm down here on the Mississippi River this morning. There's the ships, all of that commerce coming up and down the river. And I'm here in a spot where you can access it from land. So I'm standing on the rocks here and I'm gonna try to catch catfish. <clears throat> Got my ugly stick, seven foot medium heavy casting rod with the big ugly stick SC20 push button reel i really like it for catfish to a one ounce carolina rig and that's a 30 pound fluoro hook my mullet up okay there he is river's not really rolling too hard no big deal I'm just gonna do some casting and retrieving. I've never been to this spot, so I don't quite know like how far the rocks, rocks go out and everything. Hopefully this rod will help me kind of get a feel of what's going on out there. All right, I'm not gonna let it go down too bad. The river is really low right now. <clears throat> Normally that doesn't happen till a little bit further into the fall but we just haven't had a lot of rain so we got a low river all right nothing interested in that plastic so i'm gonna put a piece of cut mullet on there and get it out All right, so I got my two rods set out here. This has got a one ounce. This has got about a half ounce on it. Uh, you definitely have some current coming down the river. I wouldn't say it's really strong right now, but you got it for sure. All right, y'all, so I don't know what the heck that was, a huge bubbling geyser. I texted my buddy who sent me over here. He said, throw the cast net where that just happened at. So this is all new to me. Crazy place. We gonna see. What's the world? Yep. There they are. He was right. Holy cow. Jeez Louise, look at the size of those mullet. Holy smokes. What the heck? So yeah, there was that huge bubbling. I caught just a little bit of it and I threw the cast net there and loaded it up with mullet. Okay. So I've been out here for uh, about an hour, you know, got some cut mullet sitting. I'm very surprised I haven't had a bite. That's, I don't know, I don't get that. Uh, so if you, if you do subscribe to my channel and 
If you have been watching, you've seen the videos I just did in Missouri. Uh, we did a catfishing trip with my buddy Terry on Truman Lake, caught all the catfish you could ever want. Then we did the rainbow trout at a state park and uh and of course the crawfish which y'all know me you know uh crawfish is something i love and so this will be my first video back home and i don't know how to describe it but folks i'll be honest this is kind of depressing but it just didn't seem that the resource had as much pressure and they took a lot better care of it like i'm surrounded by disgusting trash right now everywhere everywhere you look anything you can imagine uh we just don't take care of this place you know um i don't know if that's because the hurricanes and you view it as a temporary home or uh, you know I, I really don't know where that comes from and that's you know it's been a while since i've traveled so seeing that you know and then being here right now frankly I, I don't want to be here i don't want to be making this video i don't you know it's tough now was this the best spot to 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 get back and enjoy the beauty of nature in louisiana probably not in fact absolutely not um but i know that y'all like to watch bank fishing so your options are somewhat limited and uh yeah, folks, I don't know. I just wanted to talk a little bit because I don't really get to do that on this channel. Most of the time I'm hosting for y'all and, and trying to give you the best video possible with the most action, the most story. You don't ever get to just sit and talk. And while it's on my mind, I wanted to talk about it. That's where it is and that's where it's at. And I appreciate y'all listening to me. And, you know, if you have anything to say, of course, Now's the time to say it, you know, I'm sure I'm sure everyone can kind of relate to that to some degree, but we do need to take a much we do need to do a better job of taking care of this place. This is just is depressing to see the amount of trash here. But I'm going to show you all just what I'm talking about. Just I mean, right here from from where I'm sitting. Let's just look at everything. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. And you could say, well, you know, that's that's coming from the river and the river drains most of the country. And that, you know, that could be true to some degree but to me it looks like most of this was thrown here by people fishing no other way to say it and i know that because a lot of it is fishing trash fishing line cigar wrappers you want to smoke a cigar while you fish that's fine just everywhere it's, it's literally everywhere what kind of what kind of who who would want to who would want to do this fishing trash everybody likes to enjoy a good beer but you don't have to leave it there cast net i mean this goes on and on folks we got to do better we got to do better you know this is a little bit more upbeat though uh, you know also if you watched those missouri videos i went out with three different folks one was terry knight and that is an interesting connection there so when i started the channel a little bit over two years ago one of my first like i guess subscribers and who i became friends with was a guy named daniel edwards and daniel's just a cool dude we're the same age we had you know his son's about the same age as jack we just have a lot in common you know uh growing up in louisiana of course all the cultural stuff and um he was like one of the first people like dude you got this you know you can do this and dude i didn't even know you know like we, we didn't even know each other but he was like one of my biggest i guess um i don't know, just like a guy who, who i don't know he just made me feel like i could do it you know and i always appreciated him for that well he's got a buddy that lives out there in missouri who grew up in louisiana and he connected us and that's how i met terry 
and Terry was awesome, man. Like, just that dude was jump on the boat and let's go, you know. Um, we had talked before, but it's just kind of nice to have, like, the channel be that connection. And then, of course, the next thing we did was the rainbow trout. And that was more so me, like, you know, I was... It, it'd be one thing to show up to Missouri and try to figure it out on my own and you know I'm sure to some degree I could have done that but it's a lot better when you could show up somewhere new and someone's like yeah come on let's go and uh I felt like man you know my best chance to find someone to do that would be another YouTuber so I'll go on YouTube type you know about the area that I'm going to be in and and found this channel called Continuum Outdoors started watching these guys videos young guys and uh you know you could tell they were just good dudes and so I reached out to them, said, hey, man, I'm coming to town. We'd love to do a collaboration with y'all, Would you know, would appreciate it. And, and they took me up on it as well. Met them at their state park by their house. Beautiful place. They gave me they gave me, a, a, you know, a little case full of micro jigs. And once again, it's like those connections and those those things that happen as a result of the channel. Let me know that this is God's not plan for me, like being connected to good people like that, but also being able to help them like they're just getting started. And I've had people help me along the way. So being able to be like, all right, you know, once people watch the video, go subscribe to them, go, go help them out. And I think that's one way we could always pay it forward because it was done for me. And I'll give you an example, right? Like, so deer meat for dinner doesn't know me from Adam, uh, was able to get in contact with him and show him a little bit about what we do. And he said, yeah, let's do it, you know? And that guy, a little bit over a month ago, had a stroke. Like, that could have easily went a whole different direction. His life could be very different than it is now. He's already rocking and rolling back to almost, you know, 100%. And I was finally able to, to get in touch with him the other day. I had, you know, texted him throughout the whole thing and let him know we were thinking of him and, and all that but I finally got him on the phone and dude it was just so good to hear his voice and one of the first things he said how can I help how can I help you know we're, we're, we're gonna get together again and just like I said that it's like moments like that that let me know this is where God wants me to be and, and what he wants me to be doing because I feel like ultimately as it grows I'll be able to help more people that's just something I feel we're not going to focus on the negative. I'm not going to focus on the fact that the catfish are inviting. I'm going to find the positive. And the positive to me is that I could probably catch all the mullet I want to catch right now. I could probably go home and cook something y'all have never seen people cook with mullet before. So instead of dwelling on the negative and what could be, let's focus on what the good Lord is offering and what's positive about it. And let's make it happen. Alright folks, if there's one thing I have learned from my time in Louisiana, growing up here, cooking our food, is that you can hide the flavor of certain things by cooking them in certain things such as a gravy, sauce. So my trick today will be to use this chorizo sausage to cook that mullet with and put it in a breakfast taco. Alright, got some butter melted here. I'm going to drop my mullet in. I'll go ahead and hit that mullet with some fajita seasoning. Yeah, a little fajita seasoning on your mullet. We can cover up any flavor that that mullet would have, which honestly, I like mullet. I don't think it's bad at all. Uh, but I've never had freshwater mullet. So we're going to see. That mullet was living in freshwater. I don't know if that changes the flavor or what. But I think it's going to be just fine. All right, I'm not going to be scared to just really just mix it up, you know. What we're doing is we're adding some lean protein to the uh, somewhat fatty sausage. So you're not just filling your taco with a fatty sausage. You're getting some lean protein in there, right? Right? Got to look at the positive, right? Can't dwell on the negative. I can tell you one thing. It smells amazing. All right, and I went ahead and dropped me three eggs in there. All right, once your eggs are done, just go ahead and mix everybody all together. 
It ain't gonna be bad, I can promise you that. All right, got my tortillas warmed up. Let's get us a nice scoop of that mullet chorizo. Mm-hmm. Another nice scoop of mullet chorizo. Mm-hmm. Top it off. All right, bruh. That's why we looking. That's what we doing. All right. Well, it could be a lot worse. Here we are after a little weird fishing trip, hanging out in the pool, enjoying breakfast tacos. Right? I mean, look at that. Sometimes you just got to make the best out of it. But will it pass a taste test? That's a good breakfast taco. <laughs> Thank y'all again for letting me talk a little bit. Thank you again for tuning in. You're definitely back here in the bayou. I'll get back after it. Can't wait to hear from y'all. If you like this kind of thing, catching cooks, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. See y'all soon.